You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. snapping the Celtics' seven-game winning streak as the Pelicans propel themselves into a three-game winning streak with the potential for more. So a big broadcast tonight that we'll be covering. We'll be breaking that down with stats, uh, interviews from El Gentry, New Holiday, and others. And we'd like to give you a warm applause for joining us tonight on the Pelican Post Game Report. And coming in tonight is Pelican... I view contributor D C. How you doing, my friend? Oh man, I'm amped up. I'm ready to go uh shoot some hoops after watching that game, bro. Yeah, it was I'm a big try to sign up for the Pelicans, man. We might be so interesting. Interesting big win for the Pelicans. I myself from the previous podcast uh, actually picked against my team. Not seeing the fact that they have well the last couple of games beating Portland one nineteen to 113 and then beating New York in overtime 123 to 118 in Madison Square Garden then traveling to Boston to TD Garden and beating them 116 to 113 huge win against a quality opponent the Boston Celtics are the best team in the East record wise they're pretty damn good in uh, Boston in that building winning 18 games on the season major major win on this game and we're gonna get more and more into the game and we're going to get into the rundown brought to you by the posh lifestyle.com. That's www.poshlife, life spelled with a Y, L Y F E style.com for all your health related needs. And they sell dozens, thousands, hundreds of products on the posh lifestyle.com for health, water filters, hair products, music products, uh, security protection products, cameras, all kind of stuff. Just go there and check them out at the posh lifestyle.com life spell the Y and a little gift to you. When you uh, go to the posh lifestyle.com, you could put in the sports coma, all lowercase in the coupon section and receive 10% off on your final purchase. A little gift to you as we keep giving gifts in this new year. We'll keep uh, keep on giving you these Pelican post game reports, and uh, we're I'm pro- I'm pretty happy, man. Uh, and I know a lot of people out there. This will go a long way, maybe a little bit to help them get over that chagrin we suffered last Sunday. So uh, this is a little help, thanks to the Pelicans, kind of kind of pushing up the mood, beating the top Boston club. So uh, let's get into the the rundown here. We're gonna talk about uh, AD's out out of worldly performance against this. Boston team I mean I mean I I, I just can't put enough accolades together to uh, to talk about how good how excellent that Anthony Davis has been playing and also we're going to discuss uh, something in the mindset of the Pelicans is starting to click something special is starting to accrue here and this major win over Boston might be a precursor to something greater. We'll discuss that three game winning streak is now official as they take down Boston. Are we seeing a potential for six or seven? Perhaps we'll discuss that as well. And uh, also we'll break the games down with stats facts in the second half of our show, the seven sec second segment. It's a 40 hour podcast. We'll preview the upcoming Atlanta game tomorrow, Wednesday night at Phillips arena. And uh, we'll kind of hip you to uh, what do we think will go on and get you ready for that game as well. 
Of course, in this game, we'll have interviews from L. Gentry, Drew Holiday, Ian Clark, and Rajon Rondo as they break down the games. But before we get into it after the rundown, DC, what were your thoughts after watching this compelling 116-113 overtime win over the Boston Celtics? Um, immediately excitement because um, this looks like the team that we hyped them up to be before the season started. Absolutely. This is the Pelican squad that we thought would come out. So uh, it's very exciting to see them uh, live up to their potential. You had Drew Holiday doing his thing. DeMarcus Cousins kind of took a back seat the way that he should and be kind of that third option. Uh in certain games and AD took over and he was the guy like, um, they put the ball in his hands and, and everything went off of him. And that's how it should be. And I feel like if they do that along with playing defense and cutting down on the turnovers, which they did, even though they still had 15, we'll, we'll be a pretty damn good team. Absolutely. Uh, after Davis, 45 minutes of play finished with 45 points on the game, 16 rebounds, that's, that's a point Davis. a minute. Big time, big time play by Anthony Davis in this game. So let's listen to the coach, Al Gentry. We'll come back and give some more stats on his game and uh, some more facts on his game. But let's listen to Al Gentry on his thoughts about coach, tonight's magnificent win. Your thoughts on what, what and how your team pulled this out? Well, it was just a good basketball game between two good teams. I thought, you know, we did a, I thought we did a great job defensively in the first half trying to contain Kyrie you know that that's not going to last the entire game uh, that at some stage he's going to uh, try to take over the game and, and he did but I thought we hung in and uh, you know really I mean AD was terrific I thought you know the box did a good job uh, you know I thought Ian Clark probably played his best game for us and then Drew was you know down the stretch Drew was great so uh, you know we uh, came up with stops when we absolutely had to and uh, then we, we were able to make some plays down the stretch. That was the difference in the game. Coach, it, it seemed like Davis was on such a roll, and then they were able to, and much like you did with Kyrie in the first half, they were able to do kind of a number on him in the fourth quarter. Were you concerned that you wouldn't be able to get back to him to win the game? Well, uh, you know, and I don't know. I, I think they did a good job on him, but I also, you know, he had played a lot, of, a long stretch of minutes, and I think that uh, he was fatigued more than anything. And, you know, we were trying to find a way to, get him a few minutes going that uh, you know they do a lot a lot of good things defensively and we were still able to come up with some big plays especially Drew I thought Drew really down the stretch did a great job of kind of taking over the game and, and really he was the one that kind of brought us home we still got 40 games or 39 games to go so uh, in the grand scheme of things it doesn't mean anything except you get a road win against a good team I thought defensively he was really good I thought defensively he did a really really good job you know especially on Marcus Smart and uh, even on Kyrie when he was on him a couple of times uh, and then his cutting and his movement on offense really loosens up everything for us and and although I you know I don't know I think he must I think he had 15 points or something it really that's 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 not why we think that he played well we thought we thought that he played well because of his movement and his cutting and the way that he uh, opens up our offense really Coach, what is your plan uh, for the rest of the season for Umer Ashik? For Amsa? Um, oh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 really tough for for Omir. You know, the game has really changed. Uh, you know, it's a really fast-paced, pick and pop kind of game, and. Uh, you know, in certain situations we can use them, but there's going to be a lot of situations where you're playing against five men that, uh, you know, stretch fives, if you want to call them that, where it's really difficult for him to do. What have you seen from your team as far as being able on the road to come through in, like, crunch time? And just It seems like there's been a lot of performances like that. Uh, you know, I just, I mean, confidence in this league is everything, and I think our guys are starting to get confident, and we've been healthy, you know, we're... We can start to play guys and have a rotation, and, and guys feel good about it. And uh, uh, I think as long as that's the case, where we're not plugging in guys and plugging them out, uh, that we've been pretty consistent in the way we play. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Time now for your Dixie Beer post game. Elvin Gentry in the win over the uh, Boston Celtics. Of course, this is the Pelicans' third straight win, and this is the longest winning streak of the season, if you can dig that right. 
Three straight wins there. El Gentry sounds pretty amped about it, to say the least, in this matchup. Should be. 23 points for Drew Holiday in an outstanding game. 41 minutes. Drew Holiday was 9 of 16, 3 of 5 from downtown. Finished with 23 points, 7 assists in the game. DeMarcus Cousins, 19 points, 15 rebounds. Uh, but he has the dubious sign of having seven turnovers as well. He can just, just turns the <laughs> ball over a lot. And off the bench for the Pelicans, Ian Clark. Now, we could talk about the big three. The, they were the big three tonight because Drew Holiday really stepped up and hit some serious shots. And not only that, the statistics don't show you how it well – Right, at well of defensive – how well defensively Drew Holiday, Rondo – uh, and Etwine Moore, even to, to a degree. Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins collapsed to the basket. They were blocking shots together. I mean, I've seen more than a handful of plays where DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis converged on the paint. Anthony Davis fought for uh, offensive rebounds, in which he had eight offensive rebounds today and eight defensive rebounds. He was on the offensive rebound, on the offensive boards, crashing, getting stuff happening, making things happen. And I just think it was terrific how he did it. But Ian Clark, Ian Clark was magnificent in this game. He came in and he was a spark plug early on in the game for the first and the second quarters. Ian Clark was there. He played 32 minutes. He was 7 of 10 shooting, had 15 points in the game. And a lot of his points, 10 points, came in the first half where he really sparked the Pelicans uh, to basically basically control the first half of the game. They looked spectacular in the first half of the game, and Ian Clark really sparked that and, and held that together. DC, what do you thought, think you're thinking, your thoughts on what I just said before we play Ian Clark's interview? Yeah, I think he definitely uh, balled out, man, along with your sentiments about Drew Holiday. Um, it was all dead on, man. I couldn't get a better recap myself. I think uh, – a lot of guys stepped up outside of AD and DeMarcus Cousins. And uh, I remember we were talking off air, and I was saying Mike James, man, this Mike James pickup we got was a pretty good pickup. I'm wondering if the player's feeling the same way once he gets <laughs> uh, inserted into the rotation, bro, because that's a pretty quality player we picked yeah. up for nothing. Right. You get him in there, I, I, somebody is not going to play. That's bottom line. So, uh and very I'm interesting. Jamel Nelson, man. Might be Jamel Nelson uh, out the <laughs> second consecutive game with personal issues. Uh, let's listen to Ian Clark. Yeah, he, he know he, he know his time up, man. He, yeah, they will. Losing it. Well, well, <laughs> uh, Jamel Nelson out with uh, with a uh, bruised eagle. Uh, here's Ian Clark <laughs> and what he his thoughts on tonight's game. Excellent game for Ian Clark. Probably the coach said it himself one of his best games, his best game as a Pelican. Here's the answer. Um, I think this is one of our best performances of the year. Um, I think we we played together, but it started on the defensive end. Um, we executed the game plan really, really, really well. Uh, let see if we got one more tomorrow. I'm going to make sure we close it out the right way, but I think we're taking the right steps. Coach talked about how, again, you're cutting and some of the stuff that you're doing on offense that might be unnoticed has been helping a lot and one of the reasons why you're playing a good amount, especially like with the game on the line. Um, what did you see like, offensively tonight for you to be able to have the game that you did and, and contribute in like, such huge spots? Like um, just wanted to be aggressive. Um, you know, obviously we, we, we got, you know, three guys that, that we know are going to take you know, majority of the shots, and those guys, you know, deserve it. But we got to, the guys got to give them some help. Um, obviously, the guys coming off the benches, uh, our role is to to bring energy uh, defensively and offensively. And, you know, tonight, I just want to look to be aggressive and, and, and make shots. You've been here for a few months now, obviously, with this team and seen AD now 40-something games into the season. What are, you, what are your thoughts on just the way that he's played, especially in these last um, two two games? He's unbelievable. He's special. He's special. Unbelievable player. Um, but we just, we expect that from him. You know, he's one of the top top players in this league. Oh, and, and we breaking down the game. And uh, Ian Clark had a, sp- a, a, a terrific game, to be quite honest with you. He was excellent. And um, – he really played well. Now, he had 15 in his game. Of course, if you go back to his game last December against the Miami Heat, he had 19 points in that game. But uh, I think this game against a quality opponent probably was his biggest game of the year, despite the point total, putting in 32 minutes of play. So be that as it may, I'm just actually absolutely uh, just uh, just caught in the moment, man, how – uh, it, it just appears to the, like the Pelicans are moving in a direction 
uh, that we anticipated with a huge win. They were able to put it together defensively and offensively against a very stellar team. And uh, just some huge, magnificent win in, in every sense of the word. Anyway, we're about to go into our first commercial break. When we come back on the other side, we'll play a few more interviews uh, from this Boston matchup. Uh, throw Drew Holiday in the mix. Might get a little bit of from Rajon Rondo on the other side of the break. We're also getting the rest of our topics. Something clicking for the Pels in their mindset. We'll go over that. The three-game winning streak, of course, we'll cover that and the potential for more. And then we'll look at the preview of Atlanta, the next matchup in Atlanta, in the Phillips Arena. We'll go over that as well on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Bounds. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Are recapping the Pelicans' big win, one sixteen to one thirteen overtime win over the new uh, the uh, Boston Celtics in Boston TD Garden. Big win for the Pelicans. Got a few topics we want to tack uh, before we finish up on the show, but let's hit some more interviews in just a moment uh, in this game. So Rajon Rondo was a major fact in the game. Drew Holiday in an interview uh, gave him major credit and said that he was a reason why. Uh, in, in many cases that uh, Kyrie Irving, who was held to basically three points in the first half, exploded in the second half and, and into overtime accruing. But a lot of uh, that defensive help during the first period, uh, first half of the game was done by Ray John Rondo. So let's listen to what Drew Holiday had to say after the game was over. Here's Drew. Well, Joe, that's exactly who I'm with, Drew. Congratulations. What a thrilling win. What was the key to pulling this one out after a rather slow second half? You know, um, we had a little bit of momentum going up in the halftime because we're up 10. But uh, I think that slow second half, they kind of came back and punched us. But we we withstood it, uh, came back and played defense. I think the biggest part for us was getting rebounds that, down the stretch. That would have maybe even sealed it earlier. But... Uh, man, just fighting, um, figuring it out as a team. Big, big team win last game for, for a comeback, and and this one just big, big team win for another one tomorrow. 
How did you do defensively what you did to, to contain yeah, him so well? That was Rondo. That was Rondo. He was chasing, he was chasing him around, uh, pushing the pace. I think he tried to get him tired. I think toward the end of the game, that kind of wore, wore him down. So uh, he was effective at the end of the game, but not as effective as, as he, they, he probably wanted to be. Beating the Celtics at their own game, defense. You mentioned in Clark a second ago, and I have to ask you about him because, boy, he really seemed to step up big tonight. Played great. Um, as well as last game, he was in it last game uh, for, I think, fourth quarter and overtime. Uh, he's, he's just a threat. You know, he can, he can play, he can score. Had a big rebound. Um, so, again, if we keep on playing like this, it will be really hard to play with. What type of confidence does it give this team to have two thrilling overtime wins like this in a row on the road? Right. A big boost, um, especially going into a back-to-back, -back, which Atlanta's no joke either. They play really hard, uh, but uh, a really good Bruce, one of, the, one of the best teams in the East. Would you say this was your biggest win of the season so far, given that the Celtics are number one in the power rankings and the favorite team in the East? Uh, may, maybe. Um, I, I would probably say so because of our, our first half. We had an awesome first half. Uh, we had the Celtics down 10 points in the first half. So, <laughs> Congratulations, my friend. You had to enjoy that one. Oh, yeah, for sure. This guy took over in, in overtime nah, for us. So. I'm just playing. I mean, respect the bag. You got a good win. Like Tony Allen said, respect the bag, man. <laughs> having a little fun. Everything's better when you win, no doubt about it. Uh, looking at some of the statistics here, DC from the uh, from the big win over New, uh, the Boston Celtics, the uh, the Pelicans shot forty five out of hundred. They had forty five percent from the field, shooting flat. Three point from downtown, they were about twenty six percent. Seven of twenty seven didn't have a great day from there, but they were seventy six percent from the free throw line. Got there twenty four times, converted nineteen of them. And actually, if they'd have hit a couple of free throws, they would have won this game in regulation, which shows you how critical hitting free yeah, throws are. We missed, we missed are. about four or five of them, huh? Yes. And a couple of them was pretty makeable, especially in the in the last five minutes of the game. Uh, AD missed a couple of them. DeMarcus Cousins missed. Drew Holiday missed. If 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 at least two of those were converted, this game would not, but not went into overtime. But that shows you just how critical free throws are. The Pelicans did win the rebound battle, 55 to 53 against Boston. They out assisted them 28 to 27, and they also have uh, uh, only turned the ball over 15 times for 13 points. Now get this, get this. The Pelicans forced 19 turnovers from Boston and converted 32 points off of their 19 turnovers. Now that's a, that now that to me goes to show you how it was to show you the, the 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 change of things. They even won the fast point battle 15 to 10 and dominated the Pelicans in points in the paint. I mean the the, the Celtics, excuse me, but points in the paint 50 to 30 beating them 20 uh by 20 points in the paint as well and also they controlled their uh uh, uh didn't have as many fouls. So this team had a really good outing, had a few breakdowns, 15 turnovers, still in all. They were still at the mid with 75%. I still think if they would have shot in a higher percentile, the 79, 80 range, it'll make it a lot easier on them. But they took it in overtime, be that as it may, and they were able to pull it out against Boston in this matchup. DC, uh, final thoughts on this before we switch over to uh, other subjects. Man, this is an impressive win, and uh, I think this is a taste of things to come. This is the quiet before the storm. Maybe not so quiet, but this is what we've been anticipating. Uh, now they know they can do it. They have a, a, a standard to set themselves amongst, and they've done it against one of the best teams. Man, I can't be more proud of the Pelicans. Biggest win of the year. We had some interviews from Rajon Rondo. was going to play for him by Rajon Rondo and Ian Clark, uh, but due to the diligence of time we'll have to forego those we have a few topics that we want to go over uh, so let's talk about the mindset of the pelicans uh going forward here something obviously clicked the last three games uh knocking off portland beat new york in new york beat boston in boston these teams are pretty good new york's pretty decent pretty decent in their in their building boston is re uh is pretty good in their building 18 and 6 prior to the matchup tonight the Pelicans took it upon themselves and uh, in, uh, in a very unique fashion. They won the first half convincingly. They came out, they held Boston to 25 points in the first and 23 in the second while scoring 32 and 26 respectively in each quarter to win the first half battle and played riveting ball in the third quarter too. The fourth quarter had a little drop off uh, but could actually won in the regulation if they'd hit some free throws. But the Pelicans were in control of this game for the pretty much 
uh, the entire game. They were in control, and the defense, the transition defense was off the chain. I mean, they were flocking. Uh, Anthony Davis had eight offensive rebounds in this game alone. Very impressive. You know, so it's the mindset of the team is obviously done switched to, uh, you know, have one big up top, another big underneath, something that we've been saying for a while now. Uh, do you recognize this as a permanent thing? Because uh, this 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 question going to segue us into our next topic. Do you perceive this? Because I think so. I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say I perceive this as a, as a change that the team is going to consistently stick to. Because cons- consistency has been outside of their grasp, just outside of their grasp. Could we consistently see after tonight's big performance a change in the team's mindset from a defensive perspective? I certainly hope so. Um, this is what you would anticipate they do with the personnel that they have. And not just in the defensive mindset, I think uh, – maybe in running the offense because that creates a uh, defense. When you cut down on your turnovers, the turnovers that you usually get, because we've been getting a lot of steals the whole year, but we turn the ball over so much that you really don't realize the impact of it. So I think that definitely uh, ties in to to what they're doing and what they need to be doing is what I'm really trying to say. So one big up top, one out. It should be that way all the time, offensive and defensive. Excellent. Now this now of course you know the consistency thing is something that we've been preaching on this show religiously me fundamentally speaking uh playing consistent yeah. good defense shooting a higher higher clip on the free throws which makes it easier for you win these games. Like I just said I'm going to say for the third time that if they would have converted at least two more free throws than what they did uh, they wouldn't have needed to go into overtime to settle the game. So it's very imperative that you, when you play very good teams, you have to hit the free throws when they're preceded because they had a lot of hard fouls in this game uh, that the referees uh, didn't call when Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins was underneath that basket. That's why it's ultra imperative that Throughout you knock the down the shots when you get there. It is, man. And I think uh, consistency is the monster that's been killing them alive. So, um, this is a big win, and I think the only way they can get the consistency aspect together is if after this happens, they don't start feeling themselves a little too much. I think that's kind of what happens with this team because they have an incredible highs followed by incredible lows. So I think maybe they start smelling their, you know, their own stuff, and, and it, it throws them off. So if they can uh, overcome that, I think maybe they can kill the consistency problem. Perhaps. Now, going forward, uh, that question led us perfectly into this next topic. The Pelicans, now on a three-game winning streak, actually could have been a four-game winning streak if you would have, if they would have won that easy game against Memphis. They lost uh, back on January the 10th, 105-102. to 102. They could actually be sitting right now on a four-game. Uh, actually, it would have been more than that. It had been a five-game winning streak because they beat Detroit the game before that. So it had been Detroit, Memphis, Portland, New York, and Boston had been a five-game winning streak. But anyway, they're sitting at a three-games right now uh, winning streak. The next team they play is Atlanta tomorrow. We'll preview that game in just a minute. Uh, in Phillips Arena, that is uh, – and, of course, Atlanta's not a very good team, but the last time when the Pelicans did face Atlanta – tough game. It's going to be a tough one. They're not a very good team, but they are very scrappy. The last time – that the Pelicans faced Atlanta was back in November the 13th, and they beat them 106 to 105, a very close game in the Smoothie King Center. So they were a very scrappy team nonetheless. They're, they're still kind of finding their way, so we expect, expect nothing less but scrappiness from Atlanta. But looking ahead at the schedule, the question, the topic is, with the Pelicans already current on this three-game win, winning streak, the next four games – uh, that the Pelicans have before they have that matchup with Houston on January the 26th. They have four games. That's Wednesday, tomorrow against Atlanta. There's a rematch, a, a revenge game against Memphis, who so far, who so far have beaten the Pelicans twice uh, this year. They have them on January the 20th. Then they have Chicago on Monday the 22nd. And then Wednesday of that of that same week, the 24th, they play Charlotte. So you got Atlanta, Memphis, Chicago, and Charlotte. All very winnable games for the Pelicans. And perhaps could even climb, they could have a seven-game winning streak before they face off against Houston, which is very imperative being that it's such a close race amongst the teams that they kind of clumped with, being that they're now sitting at the fifth uh, spot in the Western Conference overall. 
Uh, my take is it, uh, DC. I give mine in just a second. You give your take now. What do you say about that? Is it? Uh, what are your thoughts on the next four contests? Uh, can the Pelicans go on a string of wins right here, put together a seven-game winning streak, perhaps to kind of separate themselves here? Of course they can. They can. No, but will they? they? That's that's the, that's that, the next that's question. The, will the, they? The Chinese riddle. You know, uh, we know they can. Uh, obviously, they went in there and they they beat the Celtics team. Uh, they beat the Knicks, uh, and they have another game. They got a back to back tomorrow. Now, mind you, uh, that's a lot of minutes. You know that they they played these last two games. Are they gonna come out flat tomorrow against Atlanta? So this is where the the the, the um, mental toughness comes in, man. And we get to see if they've thought about and are ready to master this idea of this special thing called consistency. So if, if they're sick of being a, a middling team, as you like to call them, <laughs> I think they go in and they beat, Kings of they beat Atlanta, man. But only time will tell because uh, I don't have no crystal ball. And I say uh, they're going to lose tomorrow, even though I want them to win. I will go against you on that. We're going to preview in that game in a second. I hope I'm wrong. Call. I hope I'm wrong. I, 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 I will say. my formula, bro. Tell it, tell it's permanently, permanently broken. Well, they've broken your formula. They've won three in a row. So you have to come uh, up with a new yeah, formula. Yeah, they, they've done that before. Okay. And then they go back to lose one, win one. Well, we, well, I think this should be. I think they'll uh, do pretty decently against this team. But look, let's, let's, let's go right into that. Let's preview the game, the Atlanta game. Of course, they matched up against said Hawks. And it'll be an interesting matchup. Like I said, they beat them early in the year, barely, barely scooped out a win uh, in the Smoothie King Center last minutes. It was a real exciting game to say, nonetheless, as Dennis Schroeder, he went on a tear, uh, almost took the game from the Pelicans, came down to a last minute shot. Uh, New Orleans, looking at the t- statistics here, New Orleans is now 23 and 20. They're 12 and 11 away. They're going to Atlanta uh, to take on the Hawks, who are 12 and 31. They're not very good. 8 and 12 at home. Uh, so, you know, think about that for a second. Um, <laughs> crazy enough, the Pelicans right now, they, the points per game, 111 uh, points per game, points a- against uh, 111. So they allow, they score 111 and let 111 get scored on them. The Atlanta, uh, you can see why they're so bad. They average 104 and give up 108. The Pelicans shooting 49% flat from the field. Atlanta at 45 and a half. The Pels at rebounds about 43 rebounds per game. Atlanta about 41. Pels 26 assists a game. Atlanta's 24. The Pels five blocks a game. Atlanta's four. Seven and a half uh, steals per game for New Orleans. Atlanta gets about eight and a half a game. And currently the Pelicans on a three-game winning streak, six and four out of the last ten. The Hawks just won their uh, one tonight. Matter of fact, they were able to – uh, beat well they won their uh, won their last game on the 15th they knocked off the Spurs by three so they beat the Spurs so picture that they beat Denver too a few games before that so they're known to to, to kind of shock you there and they're four and six their last uh, uh, uh 10 contest DC looking at what Atlanta producing here like I said they have the ability to sneak in there and kind of surprise you if uh, uh every now and again they beat they beat San Antonio they beat Denver. Uh, Denver's a team that the Pelicans are known to struggle against. Top performers for the Pelic- uh, for the Atlanta Hawks are Dennis Schroeder. He's a guy that you have to look out for. 20 points a game for Schroeder. Uh, 20 points a game, about six and a half for six per contest. And he's uh, he's just a, he's, he's a terror, man. He's incredibly fast, and he's giving them 20 a game. And they have a young staff. Tareen Prince is the second guy, average about 12 and a half points a game. Kent Bezelmore is 12 points a game. Bellanini, who was a former Hornet, he averaged about 12 points a game. Ilya Sova, 11, 10 points from Dwayne Dedman, almost 11 points for Dwayne Dedman, almost 11 points for John Collins, a guy that you prefer. So they got about uh, seven guys in double figures for the Hawks. And all of these guys are young guys who's basically, you can see Atlanta's responded that uh, youth movement as they're looking to try to build that team around Dennis Schroeder, who's who's a, a, a very talented player. What are your predictions on this game uh, moving forward? I think it's a tight game that goes down to the wire and uh, Pelicans fall back into their losing ways and they, they find a way to give this game up. Uh, they go in there and muddle around, kind of come out flat and um, turn it on in the second quarter. 
and let it all get away from them late in the fourth. You know, um, until they prove me different, uh, I'm going to go with that because uh, there's a lot of minutes they had expended these last uh, two games, and, and I, th- I think it's going to catch up with them. If they are able to take this game, then, hey, I'd be very pleased with that, man. And uh, I say that's this will be a turning point in the season. I say, and I'm going to pick, and I'm looking at Atlanta. I, ho- I hope you're right, man. I'm they're 12, and, thir- they, they're they're right, 12 man. and 31, dead last in the Southeast Division. My 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 call on is that the Pelicans will get their fourth straight win. Uh, they will not look past the Atlanta Hawks. They will not look past the Hawks because the Hawks yesterday toppled the Spurs, uh, one hundred two to ninety nine, in a close one. They played the Pelicans to a one point loss uh, uh, to a one point loss the last time they played, and I fully expect that the Pelicans, after a very huge win over Boston, a quality win over New York, a quality win over Portland, will definitely top the Atlanta Hawks to get their longest winning streak of the year at four games by beating the Hawks. And that is my prediction. I am going to rock with the Pelicans because they've shown me that a light has went on and uh, and it's not going to go off. This team is ready to put – it's tired of the Midland – uh, commentary they're tired of uh, being up and down and I think they have finally found common ground which they're comfortable to play so that's my Yay, prediction that sounds so nice so that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of our show i like to thank y'all for joining us tonight for all the people out there that want to show their support please go to our Patreon page www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network and donate look at the description tab on our uh, show and support our sponsors and join our social media family from dc i'm big q thank you for joining us peace Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily, here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the poshlifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. 
Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 